I'm Nate, this is Shootfish Productions and this is Creatly Ender Free 3D Printer. Uh, if, you, if you've just gotten one and it's got a fault or you got it from new and uh, that things don't seem to be going right, keep watching because we've got all the fixes for you. Some hints, tips, tricks and uh, hopefully that can help you out. So uh, if you want to find out more, keep watching. So this is Creality Ender 3. Um, this could apply to any Creality printer, or in fact any any brand of printer. To be honest, um, most of these printers are all made in a similar manner. Uh, you got your X, Y, and Z um, movement. Uh, you said going up and down, um, and basically they all work on pretty much a similar type of software, hardware, you name it. Um, so anyway, when I first got this printer brand new, not this particular one maybe because I've got several. Um, the first thing I'd done, uh, uh, once I'd finished managing getting it together, um, there's a called a Hulman function where, because all these are all out of line and stuff, and I'll just move this up and down just to move it about and show you what happens. So, uh, so the first thing you, you sort of do when you put it all together, you got it up and running. Anyway, so you get it all together, you get it all ready to go, and the first thing you do is you want to um, home it, what they call home it, to check that all the micro switches are working correctly. Now, if you don't know what a micro switch is, we'll, we'll come to that. So the first thing you want to do, switch it on on the side, obviously. And I'm, I'm not going to. This isn't an instruction video on how to use an N3. This is to just show you the faults. I assume that you've um, read and watched the videos or whatever on how to do the basic operations of the machine. So you go on to Auto Home and you press it, and this is um, what should happen. Okay, so this is the correct function of the auto home once you press it and you know that whiz 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 that checks on the micro switch on this side, it checks the micro switch at the back and there's another micro switch, um, well there's one on the end there and there's one underneath here. Right, okay, so um, I'm going to turn the machine off so um, all the axes are free to move and I've done this a minute ago if the, if the video just suddenly jumped just because uh, I messed up. Right, on my particular machine, the problem was that was this micro switch here, which is the up and down movement. Now I'll show you what it done. This is I'm now simulating the fault by pulling the plug out because these switches are permanently made, and when the when that's activated, that breaks the connection. So what I'm going to do now, this is simulating the switch um, being pushed and the broken connection. So I'm now going to turn the machine back on. And this is what happens when you've got a fault with your Z-axis micro switch. And this is what happened to me after I put it together out of the box and I, I was frustrated. Couldn't really find that much information online, but because I've done electrical work and stuff, I had a multimeter, I could check the continuity of the switch. And I was pleased to find that um, it was simply the circuit board on the switch. So I soldered a wire on it and um, so you can see now that's, that's stopped. That's, and if I press home again, what will happen? That will just keep moving up a little bit. There you go. No, so that's what happens when your Z-axis micro switch is faulty. So I'm just going to turn this off. So basically, what I'm saying is, if if this switch is faulty, where that's not making a connection. Um, what will happen, that axis won't, won't move, or it won't move properly, that just goes and stop. So if you can just zoom in a bit on there, Daz, um, the repair consisted of, um, there's two connections on the switch basically, and two on this wire, and basically that was a, a case of, I took this switch off and soldered a little wire across the circuit board where that was broken. So um, you can buy a new switch, they're quite cheap, you might be better off if you're not certain about soldering and repairing things with wires you could just get a new switch which i think are less than a fiver in the uk days i think um all the switches i needed i got a bag of 20 yeah like a couple of quid yeah so these switches are cheap i mean obviously if you're in a hurry and it's christmas day and you just put your machine together um any access to start moving check the switch now there's another one of those switches um 
inside here so where this cover comes off so you got you got those two switch for that direction and on the back of the machine um you can't see it too well i will just tip the machine up there yeah, you can the, lay it flat i've got a better angle yeah, have you yeah, yeah this switch on the back bit. here the plate it's that now obviously um I'd say it doesn't have to be a Corelli machine, any sort of 3D printer that will well, use. That's what I was yeah. with mine. Yeah. They're yeah. the same type of switches. Yeah, well, yours but was. They're metal bits. Yeah. Popped out. So that was all, still had all power. That yeah. just never got the signal to yeah. stop it. Exactly, exactly. So, you know, check your switches. It's a quick and uh, simple fix. Basically, this is a remake of a video done quite, quite probably a couple of years ago now. Um, and that helped a lot of people out. So I want to sort of redo it, on, on, get better visuals on the repair. Um, hoping that can help even more people. Um, we're going to do some more other videos after this one on various factors about this machine. Um, I hope you found this helpful and useful. Uh, I've only had a couple of comments who said, you know, that was a load of rubbish. But uh, in general, it's been a positive response. Um, thanks for watching. I'll see you on the next uh, Creality video.